Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to be talking about Python packaging and specifically, we're going to be talking about how to manage resources, things like data files and other stuff that you would include in your package that are not Python files. And unfortunately, there's kind of a lot of confusion around this topic and there's several different ways to do it. So I'm going to show you what each of the common options are and my suggestion for how I usually do resources. So let's jump into that. Okay, for this, we're going to start from scratch. So we're going to be completely building an entire package today. And uh, just to start, we're going to set up some namespaces and a setup.py. Uh, I would probably convert this to setup.cfg, um, but it's you know, easier to kind of hack on it quickly with setup.py. So let's get started with that. So I'm going to make a setup.py from setup tools import setup. And this is kind of the basics that you need for your package. Uh, you know, package and a version. Um, and I think that's all we're gonna do to get started. So now let's add some namespaces to this package. So, uh, you know, make dir my package, I guess. And we'll put an init.py file there and maybe we'll, um, you know, make a, a, main, a main file. And because we added a package here, usually what you would do is from, setup tools import find packages and then you would do packages equals find packages and i usually do exclude equals test star and testing star um, however we don't have these directories here today so we can actually leave that out but i'll i'll, I'll just leave it in because you know best practice or whatever um and we're gonna be talking about two different types of distributions today we're gonna be talking about source distributions and wheels which simulate how a package is going to be installed uh, we'll actually install it later to show how it works but just to show that this works so far uh, i'm going to generate two different distributions let's just make a virtual uh because that gives me access to setup tools really quickly uh, if we do python setup.py sdist bdist wheel this will produce a source distribution and it will produce the wheel at the same time and it runs all this build stuff here, and it produces those outputs inside this disk directory. And we're gonna spend a bunch of time looking at what's inside these different files, and the two ways we're gonna do that is with uh, unzip-l. This'll show us, uh, so wheels are actually just zip files of like installed state. And unzip-l just shows us what's inside that wheel. So you can see we brought along init.py, and we also brought along main.py, and that happened automatically because of this packages thing. We'll also look at our source distribution, but for that we need to use tar. Uh, I believe it's this command, tar dash dash list dash f, yeah, which you know produces a similar output. Uh, but you can see here that like in our source distribution we have those module files. Now the point of a source distribution is that you could reuse that uh, distribution to build the final state. So there's kind of two different ways to get to installed state. One is from like your checkout, and the other is from your source distribution. And normally, uh, your source distribution sh should still be able to build into the final product. Now, it's pretty easy to make a buggy source distribution, unfortunately, um, but hopefully you're using a tool like Tox or whatever to help you validate that. Okay, but now that we have a basic package, let's talk about resources. And the first thing that people jump to with resources is manifest.in and include package data equals true. And I actually argued that this is not the right way to go about this, but it does work in most cases. Um, but sometimes you'll pull along too many files into your final distribution that you don't need. So let's let's set that up really quickly and show how that works. Um, so if we make a, uh, let's just delete the distribution. If we make a data files, let's just say like we, I don't know, want to distribute a foo.json file, which, for the sake of JSON is just gonna be an empty map because that's the easiest JSON. Um, if we do that same bdist wheel, I'm actually gonna make a command here that does this all in one. Unzip dash L dist slash star dot wheel. So we're gonna delete the dist, then we're gonna make the source distribution in the wheel, we're gonna list what's in the wheel, and we're going to list what's in the, uh, the source distribution. So this will do all of that at once, and you'll see that even though we added that JSON file to my package, it didn't get pulled along into here. And so the first thing we're gonna talk about is manifest.in, and that's how you add data files to your source distribution. 
Um, this is for like, you know, if you needed something at build time, you would add it to manifest in. Um, so let's make a manifest.in. And it has a bunch of, you know, special directives. You guys can look these up. I don't actually remember most of them. The one I remember is recursive include, which takes a directory and a glob, star.json. So this will cause uh, all JSON files inside of my package to be included in the source distribution. So now that we have this manifest.in file, if we run the same command again, you'll notice here that our wheel does not include the JSON file. And this is because we only specified it in manifest.in. However, our build time uh, source distribution does include this JSON file. And this can be useful if you want to, you know, say, make a, uh, a bit of code in setup.py that builds another output. So maybe like you're taking some JSON file and you pre-process it and turn it into another Python file. Um, that might be how you could do something like this. And actually, let me see if I can come up with an example for that. From setuptools.commands.buildpy import buildpy. Uh, buildpy is one of the phases of set of tools build process that allows you to produce new Python files. Uh, let's see, my build pie, which extends build pie. And the way you implement these are with a run method, if I remember correctly. <laughs> it's been a while since I've, you know, built Python files as part of setup.py. This is like super advanced stuff. Like you probably don't need to do this, but I just wanted to do it for an example. Um, and let's say that we're, you know, taking this foo.json file and turning it into some other file. So maybe with open my package slash foo.json as f uh, contents equals json dot load f and maybe we're writing out my package slash foo.py or something like that f dot write i don't know json equals contents bang r so this will just allow us to produce you know a new python file that contains some generated code here. And in order to trigger that command, uh, this build pi, we need to do command class, command class equals build pi, pi build pi. And so this will allow us to have a custom Python file be written out. So if we run this again, uh, no module, I, bet, I guess I said tools command. You can tell how much I remember this. JSON is not defined, of course. Uh, cool. So that succeeded. It didn't work though. <laughs> why didn't it work? Oh, I know why. Uh, we forgot to call the superclass. Because uh, the superclass actually does some additional behavior. Uh, cool. So that time it worked. So you can see that our source division, it actually included this foo.py file, and that's kind of a bug, but that's because it's in my, um, in my working directory. Technically, this should this should actually operate inside the set of tools temporary directory, um, but I'm lazy, so I didn't do that. Uh, but you can see here's here's how it works from a clean run. So there's no foo.py here. There's just that source file here. Uh, generally, you don't want to distribute your outputs as part of your source distribution because it's supposed to be the source, not the outputs. Uh, but you can see here that in the wheel we ended up with foo.py. Now, uh, let me show you an example of where we actually have like, you know, an easy way to introduce a bug here. If we move this manifest.in file to, you know, some other file that's not that so that it doesn't trigger, uh, you'll see if I run this beatist wheel again, that, um, well, let me delete my package foo.py so that You'll notice here that it did succeed in creating foo.py, but we actually didn't, wait, why is foo.json in there? Uh, well, probably because I have to delete the build directory in between the two as well. That's weird, why is it including the file? <laughs> um, maybe we have to delete the egg info also? Some reason it's picking up older cache data. This is why packaging is doing. Okay, here, here we go. Also delete my package foo.py since that's our build output as well. So you can see here that it is actually generating this foo.py into our wheel, even though we didn't include it in our source distribution. And if we actually cd into here and try and build the wheel from this source distribution, so pip wheel my package dot 
tar.gz, you'll see that we actually get an error here because this file wasn't correctly brought along. So sometimes, you know, it's, it's useful to double check that your source distribution can actually build your produced output. Um, but also, <laughs> a surprising amount of caching there. Or, um, yeah, okay, so that's including data files in your source distribution. Um, now, the the usual way, or the, the way that some people suggest to also include this JSON file in the installed state or in the wheel is to add, let's actually edit this over here, uh, is to add include, include package data equals true. And what this does is it will include anything that's in that manifest.in in the final installed state. So if we run that big old command again, you'll see that foo.json actually ends up installed, in, whereas before it was just foo.py and not, not also this JSON file. Uh, but this can cause you to install too much stuff. So sometimes you only need data files to do your build and you don't need them to do your runtime. Um, and I actually think that's the more common state <laughs> where like, I don't know, I, I've built a package where um, you can build C extensions using Go and it doesn't really make sense to pull along the whole Go source tree into your output because you know those are never going to be used at runtime, uh, but they are used at build time. And so in that case, manifest.in makes sense, uh, but you don't want to include the package data. But the way that you can do both and uh, you know not have this manifest.in file, which I think is a little bit gross, and not have this argument is to uh, explicitly include your package data using the setup tools package data thing. Uh, so we're gonna delete manifest.in and we're gonna actually remove this include package data file. And the, I believe it's package underscore data. And this is a map from package names, so dotted module names to the globs of their data file. So in our case, we're gonna be using just my package and that's going to map to star.json. And I believe this is a list or a tuple um, this will cause it to get included both in the source distribution and in the output. So if we run this now, uh, you'll see that we include it here and here. And that's, that's, uh, this is how I suggest doing this. <laughs> that way you don't need an ugly manifest.in file. Um, you can be very specific about the files you want to include in your source distribution and your final distribution. So like maybe you have, you know, a license file here. Um, and you want to include license in your source distribution. Um, you can see that we ended up with the license file here, um, but it doesn't end up in our installs. I mean, it does through the dist info, but it doesn't end up in the global site package in the installed state. And um, if you have recursive directories, so let me just show an example of a dotted directory. Uh, so let's say we make my package slash package one and then put an init.py file in there. And my package, package one. And you know, maybe we have another JSON file here. Um, and if we build right now, we should actually, oh, the packages will get included by default. You'll notice that uh, package one does not include that JSON file. But if we wanted to, there's kind of two ways you can do this. One is by doing my package dot package one is maps to start at JSON. So that's that's one way to do this. Uh, the other way is you can actually, so you can see now t.json got included here. The other way is you can actually list subdirectories here. Um, and I believe that works. I've used both of them. Uh, I forgot a single quote here. Yeah, so you can see that that also worked there. Uh, but anyway, that's package data. This is how I suggest to use it. And, you know, keep your manifest separate for your build time things and use package data for your runtime things. Um, the other part of this topic, I'm not going to go into uh, much details about, but the way you access resources at runtime is using importlib.resources or the importlib resources backport. And there's a bunch of APIs for accessing data. Uh, I guess I can show you how pre-commit does this, for example. Pre-commit resources. Uh, so this is the resources that pre-commit provides, and there's like a bunch of files that uh, pre-commit needs at runtime. And I believe it's in pre-commit util. 
Uh, yeah, so this is kind of how you manage the backport. So in versions newer than 3.7, you can use import lib dot resources, uh, but in older versions, you have to install the backport from PyPI. And where is the code where it actually does this? Open binary. Yeah, so here's like an example. Like this is the resources namespace, and this is the file name that we're retrieving. And so these are these are the two um, APIs that I use. There's a bunch of other APIs for other stuff as well. But anyway, hopefully this was useful. Hopefully this is a nice little crash course on resources in Python packaging. Uh, if you guys have additional questions or other stuff you want me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one.